Welcome to the Wide World of Esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Noor. Today, we're talking about the rise of tennis esports and its road to the Olympics. My guest is Dr. Gregory Gettinger, the CEO and founder of VR Motion Learning. He's joining us from Vienna, Austria. Welcome, Gregory. Thank you. It's so nice being on your show again. All right. You were here last about a year and a half ago, and esports tennis was in beta testing. Okay. So what's been happening since then? Yeah, it was, it, it went really fast, actually. Um, I think we had a show in April. Um, in, in July last year, we went on the app lab of the Oculus. Um, and uh, it was quite a long time where we had to um, um, test and, and, and find out and, and, and fine tune. And then June 1st this year, we got on the Oculus Store. And that was like a, a boom. Because just two weeks later, we, we did the Tennis Canada VR tournament together with Tennis Canada. Uh, two weeks later, we, we went to Mongolia to the Eastern, uh, to the Asian Games, uh, where we got Olympic. Uh, and two weeks later, we have been at the US Open together with Wilson. And, and now we're sitting here and we are already discussing the next events of the ATP Vienna in, in um, at the Esther Open. Uh, in October, and and it goes on like that. So it's it's unbelievable, actually. All right, let's show the first video. Yes, I said let's digitalize tennis. You can in the virtual world play against Roger Federer. But what is really different here? you know, compared to any kind of VR tennis game is that you do all the authentic moves and technique as you would do on the real court in a metaverse. When creating the simulation, we realized that the state-of-the-art physics engines and existing scientific research couldn't deliver the precision and accuracy we needed. The main challenge in this project is to create a collision model that is capable of real-time predictions of ball velocity and ball spin after ground and racket impact. VR tennis can be closer to uh, the definition of a sports and to, to the Olympic movement. Amazing! It's unbelievable! I could really get the ball and I felt it where it went. Great! At the end it felt like real tennis. My son is still back there. He's totally hooked already, so nice. <laughs> it was so good. I It was amazing. I loved it so much. I just can't talk about it. It's so good. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right. So Gregory, is tennis esports the perfect esports uh game for the Olympics? Oh, that's a, a, a good question. Um, um yes and no. Um I would say it's perfect because you really have to do the right motion um, and the right technique. So you, you don't sit on your computer and push any buttons and shoot any aliens. You really have to stand up and play real tennis um, um, with um, you know being in the metaverse. So I think from from that point of view, I, I think it's a it's a uh, it's a great virtual sport. Um, if the Olympics want to go that way or not is a different question because the Olympic series they had in Singapore in June was a little bit mixed. They had dancing, they had chess, they had um, 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 motor cars. So I'm not quite sure now. The the Olympic Committee actually just yesterday decided on a new committee for for the Olympic uh, for the Olympic series, and we'll see what what direction they will take. So what are the chances that um, tennis esports will be at Paris 2024 or LA 2028? Um, there's a good chance. Um, it's not going to be on the real Olympics because they have basically no space and no time to put in the virtual sports. But the Olympic series is coming right after the, the Paralympics um, and um, that's on the program. So it's it's scheduled for November 23 in Paris and then in November um, 28 in Los Angeles. And I would say we have good chances. Yes, I, I hope we're going to be there. All right. So I have tickets to soccer, basketball, gymnastics and boxing for Paris 2024. But unfortunately, that's in July. So I'll have to take another trip over there for uh, um, esports tennis. Um, so what what about esports tennis um do you think i mean there was discussion about it in the video what do you think makes it um uh ideal for the olympic brand i think it's 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 a fantastic thing because now you don't have to travel anymore to compete so people around the world don't have to meet at one place and spend all the traveling costs and time um, um, to to play against each other. And the, the second point is that a far bigger audience um, um, and player base can play against each other and, and meet in the metaverse. So um, um, a third portion is you're getting much younger and um, uh, uh, audience, um, which maybe is a little bit bored from the traditional sports. Um, just take tennis, you know, um, you're playing US Open right now and a game takes like three, four hours. Now, a 13, 14 year old boy does not really want to watch three or four hours until he finds out who's winning. In in tennis esports, it takes two or three minutes and you win the tie break. And if it's best of three, within 20 minutes, you have the match is, is won. So it's it's much faster, much, um, you know, uh, much more attractive, much more engaging. Um, you can stream it on YouTube. You can show it to your friends. You can participate online. You can send your your uh, um, your comments. Um, so it's it's it fits actually the, you know, uh, the century we are we're living in. And the old Olympics is a little bit old fashioned. Yeah, and I I see it as a, a good marrying between the old style of Olympics and kind of the new, you know, the new uh, the future that we're going into because it doesn't have the violence that they're concerned about, but it also has that physical activity and it has that traditional sporting aspect what do you think about that you're right with number one and number two and you have not mentioned number three and that's the learning aspect it's the educational part um, with tennis esports you're forced to do the right moves so you're you're basically learning tennis if you have not you know played so far or you're improving your technique and we are actually you know driving your forehand to an optimal forehand um, which you can then use on the real court too. 
So you're learning a sport virtually, and it's more efficient and it's more um, effective um, than playing on the real court. So I have a burning question for you, Gregory. That is, has your game improved since I last talked to you uh, by using tennis esports? Oh, yes, tons, tons. Um, uh, it improved in the ball physics. It improved in the uh, single matching experience, in, in the multiplay. Um, uh, uh, you know, we, we brought in many features. And to be honest, we are still not there. It's going to take, you know, another three, four, five years until we have the product which we really, you know, want to have. It's a, it's a long-term project. Uh, it's not something where, you know, which, which turns around within six months. Um, it has a lot of tech um, um, involved here, a lot of investment, um, and a lot of learning because we are entering new territory. Nobody's doing what we're doing. So, um, um, yeah, it's it's a, a long way to go, but it's it's fun because it's 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 bringing so much success and fun. So, it's my understanding that um, when pro football players are not uh, playing or practicing their game, their sport, that they play Madden or, you know, other related games. Do pro tennis players or essentially, um, you know, collegiate tennis players or serious tennis players um, play tennis esports on their off time? Um, I'm not aware that the top 100 are playing, but we have, we do have lots of tennis players which are starting around you know ranking 300 to 700 and those are the tennis players who cannot afford to you know play all the tournaments because the traveling costs are so so intense um and then they play tennis esports and you still can make prize money and you can play it from home um so that's very convenient um and environmental friendly um, too all right so one thing that i have um that we talked about last time was the fact that tennis esports allows you to play with people in distant places or people that you would normally not get to play against and that the an advantage is that you can play inside when it's really hot outside or it's cold outside um so now that pickleball is so popular and that pickleball is actually taking over some tennis courts is there a further advantage to tennis esports to allow people who don't want to play pickleball to actually still participate in tennis, uh, but do it um, virtually? Um, yes. Well, I have nothing against pickleball. You know, in in, in Europe, um, paddle tennis is is quite popular in in in, in, in is growing. Um, tennis is still the classic game um, where everyone wants to play. I know about the competition between pickleball and tennis. That's the, I'm, I'm aware of that. Um, we like to stay out of that because we want to be something like add-on. You know, if you don't have two hours of time to you know to drive to the tennis club and and and, and find a partner and book a court and and go back and forth, and you just want to play you know three five minutes a, a quick tennis game for the fun of it or, or training. It's perfect. You just put your headset on, you push one button, and you are on a virtual court, and you can play tennis from home. So we're not really competing with pickleball or with tennis. It's something which is in addition. Or another example, you know, your backhand is not that well, not not going that good, and you want to train your backhand. So you 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 make your slices, and you 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 know you uh, you exercise it day by day, and you get better and better. Uh, and on the virtual court, you see with every stroke, you know, what kind of spin you give to the ball, you know, what is your velocity, you see your, your stats, you know, how you're doing. You, you don't get it on the real court. You know, the, the coach the coach cannot tell you, you know, hey, you know, you have a, a velocity of, of 123 miles with each stroke or, or your, your, your spin is um, 1,500 RPM. But in virtual tennis, you have that and you can see it over time, how it's improving or not. Um, so. We are a different animal. So the learning function is so important, correct? Yes, but the learning function is something which 
comes with the game. So we want to have fun, entertaining, entertainment. Um, and the learning just comes, you know, on the side, basically. Okay. So the entertainment piece, are there, um, is this being streamed? Is, are there fans um, who are watching uh, Tennessee sports? Um, we had our very first stream of the finals of the, ten of the Tennis Canada VR tournament. So what happened was that we had a cooperation with Tennis Canada and their tournament, um, the National Bank Open, was in, in, in Montreal and Toronto at the same time. In Toronto, there was the ATP, and in Montreal, the WTA. Um, and they wanted to, to host a VR tournament um, with us. So we had a qualification of, of six weeks um, and playoffs, and the best two were flown into Toronto and, and, and Canada, uh, Toronto and Montreal. And the interesting thing is, and, you, and I'm coming back to your question of the streaming, the interesting thing is that they played simultaneously between Toronto and Montreal, and we streamed that match on YouTube live. Um, so that was the very first time we have done it. If you want to show that video, um, um, there's a video about this, this, this final. Maybe, maybe it's just one minute. Maybe we want to show it to the audience. Serving from the north end. Oh, and there it is! Cat 84 takes home the title at our first ever Tennis Canada Virtual Reality Tournament presented by the Motorola Razor. All right, so what did we just watch? Well, you just watched the, the finals between Montreal and Toronto. And it was amazing because, you know, one player was in Montreal, one player was in Toronto. They played simultaneously a virtual tennis match. And this tennis match was broadcasted on the event of the National Bank Open. Everyone could watch there. And it was live streamed on YouTube. So actually that anyone who had a mobile or, or has a, a, a PC could watch the game at the same time. That was a world world premiere basically of of a virtual tennis final you know that's exciting because just think about people who can't afford to travel to distant locales to play tennis and you know it's a great opportunity and a great equalizer and it allows for some exciting pairings um what are your thoughts on that Yes, and it's it's not only gender neutral. It's it's not only age neutral. Um, the number seven of the tournament was Stefan, who was who is handicapped, and he played with us like in real life with 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 anyone else. But he was in in the virtual game. He's not handicapped, and he had so much fun playing the whole um, esport tennis community. You know because. He was he was in the family. There was there was no handicap for him. So that's that's really nice to see that you know we are one family and there's no discrimination whatsoever. So that's exciting that you can bring disabled athletes into this game and they can be equal to others. And also you mentioned gender neutrality. So do you have any are are when people play tennis esports? Is there any are there any divisions based on gender gender um no. or age or anything? No, not um nothing at all. Um um in the future we will make um 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 only a, a difference on, on 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 
quality of game on, on, on the ranking system so that the beginners don't play against the pros because that's that's a little bit unfair. But mm -hmm. for the for the start, everyone plays against anyone. Um, and you don't even know if it's a if it's a girl or a man um, um, unless you chat with with a person, but you can you can decide yourself if you want to chat or not. Um, and if you want to chat, you will find out um, uh, who your opponent is and you have a, a very friendly conversation and, 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 and fun um, doing that. Um, but yes, everyone plays. Everyone plays. All right. So are there any esports tennis leagues? Yes. So we have established the tennis esports tour. Um, and we already have a ranking, so we have around about 2,000 players already um, um, I'm ranked in the Tennis Esports Tour. One of those was this Tennis Canada VR tournament. Another one was the, the, the Wilson um, um, Championships, which, which were, um, uh, we had finals at the US Open. Um, and there's a calendar of events of, for the tournaments. And everyone who participates in the tournaments and in, in the weekly challenges and in our games basically earns points and gets into the ranking of the Tennis Esports Tour. What about sponsorship? Has this attracted sponsors? Yes. So the the Tennis Canada VR tournament was sponsored by Motorola Razor. Um, and there was prize money of $15,000. Um, so people were not only flown in into the country and, and got, you know, free hotels and, and accommodation, you know, whatsoever. They also, you know, got cash prizes. Um, the same happened with New York. So Wilson sponsored the, the, the second tournament. And the next tournament in Vienna is again sponsored um, by the Este Open and by the Austrian um, Tennis Federation. So it's very attractive for sponsors. You know, you have a good audience. You have, you know, a, a young audience. Um, it is, it is, uh, a, 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 has no violence in the game you learn something it's 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 fun entertaining so um um sponsors like that sure and you know i would think that there's kind of um a a nice bridge between generations um because you have the um older people who may play traditional tennis and younger people who may be interested in uh, tennis esports have you seen that Yes, absolutely. So I, I, pl I play almost every day myself and I play kids 10 years old and, 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 and sometimes even seven or eight years old. And I play 80 year old people too. So um, you have the full age distribution. And in terms of skill, um, being a tennis player, does that make it more likely you're going to be better at this? Yes. Or Okay. Um, or is there cross, cross, um, you know, other sports that may mean that someone might be better? Um, well, if you, if you know how to play tennis, you're, you know, because you're playing real tennis just on a, on a virtual court. It has the same technique, the same everything. So if you know how to play tennis, you do have a huge advantage. But you can learn it. Um, you can learn it, and um, you learn it faster in, in the, in, on the virtual court uh, than on the on the real court. Uh, so you can catch up. Um, and anyone who's sports interested is, you know, is is able to you know to play balls um, and 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 understand the bouncing balls and the timing of strokes and and how that works um, um, has advantage. Yes. So last time I talked with you, the hardware that you were using was Oculus. Has that changed at all? No, no. We are on the uh, on the Oculus Quest Two, um, and as you probably know, the Quest Three is coming out quite soon. Um, so we're going to be on the Quest Three too, um, and that's the the most popular headset. Um, and uh, we are open to to all hardware, but the Meta Quest is is the number one hardware right now. Yeah, and I do have MetaQuest um, too. I think so. I think um, I'll have to start playing. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, what? Uh, let's take a look at your website so people know how to find you. So, um, I believe this is your website, tennis-esports.com. 
So what right. can people find here? Um, here you can find how how you find us basically on the Oculus Store and what you need to have, you know, what you need to have, which is just a headset, Wi-Fi, and space, basically. Uh, but you also find all the the rankings, all the leaderboards um, um, to to find yourself. Where are you on, on on different leaderboards? And you see the event calendar, so you see what is, when is the next tournament um, I'm coming, and um, and and you can you can join those events. Um, so that's the that's the main purpose of this site. Terrific. And so, what do you think the future of uh, tennis esports is? Um, it will be a combination of training, of single match experience, you know, like a career mode, um, and certainly multiplayer. You know that you can play other people. I think that's that's going to be the triangle, um, and I'm sure it's going to be Olympic. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of other tournaments, and I'm sure we're going to have uh, a huge tennis esports tour. You know, a, a calendar um, where where everything goes and. Uh, one day we will have the uh, the International VR Tennis Federation for sure. Well, that's super exciting. I'm I'm hoping that um, I can actually see it in Paris 2024, LA 2028, and beyond. Thank you so much, Gregory. I really appreciate you being my guest. Well, thank you for having me. All right. So thank you to our viewers for joining us today. Um, make sure to tune in in two weeks. Uh, my guest will be Elliot Oreskovic of the U.S. Esports Association. See you then.